had very little information about uh, oxalates except in the uh, field of, uh, of uh, kidney stones. But we're going to be talking about oxalates in kidney stones, but many other diseases. It's probably the most important unrecognized medical factor uh, that's going on today. And uh, I recently wrote an article in the uh, Townsend Letter, and you can you can uh, just if you just Google Townsend Letter, it will take you to its website. And in the January issue, uh, you can scroll down and you can uh, read the article online on uh, all the factors on <coughs> oxalates and their toxicity. This was especially interested me because of a huge fad in the uh, in the health field uh, promulgating the use of uh, green smoothies as a health drink and and the and what I wondered is how would this work with so many of the foods being recommended in these green smoothies how how could this actually be healthy for you and they decided to do a little quantitative uh, analysis. And uh, so one of the first paragraphs in the Green Smoothie article was about a, an oncologist who, uh, who was angry at her boyfriend who, who got involved with another woman. And so she decided to off him by putting uh, antifreeze in his coffee. So the it's easy to do because antifreeze has a sweet taste that tastes kind of like sugar and so he didn't know it but luckily he did survive although he was uh, severely impaired and the thing that kills a person or impairs the person as in this thing that was in the news is that the antifreeze ethylene glycol is metabolized to oxalates. So ethylene glycol itself has very little toxicity. It's the metabolite oxalate that's so toxic and can be lethal. Matter of fact, it's so lethal that just recently legislation was passed that said you have to uh, put a unflavorful uh, re reagent into the antifreeze to prevent people from um, uh, killing one another. So the uh, one of the first things I did was look at the MSDS safety sheet. So anybody who puts chemicals out for sale has to provide a listing of all the toxic uh, substances uh, that are in a product that they they have for sale and uh, what the concentration is and what way the thing can be ingested. And they have one for oxalate. You can, you can buy the uh, salts of oxalate. Oxalate is used for cleaning car radiators. And, and uh, so these are some of the symptoms of, of uh, oxalate toxicity. Headache, muscle cramps, tetany, uh, where your muscles just uh, uh, contract muscle, twitching, cramps, convulsions. Weak and irregular heartbeat, drop in blood pressure, signs of heart failure. So these are the signs if you, if you uh, took an external source of oxalate, but these same symptoms are ones that you can have if you have excessive oxalates due to uh, drinking a lot of these uh, green smoothies. And uh, large doses can cause shock, convulsions, coma, and, and death. So according to reports in the literature, as little as five grams of oxalate was, has been fatal. And the average uh, lethal dose of oxalate is 10 to 15 grams. And I did some calculations on, on uh, what would be in one of these green smoothies. And, it, and the, the recommended amount and a common one that I found on the internet was two cups of, uh, of spinach, and that would be 15 grams, which according to the MSDS sheet would be a lethal dose of oxalate. So a green smoothie uh, could theoretically 
be the last uh, green smoothie you ever had. And even though this is uh, one of the most toxic products that that uh, are are being uh, promoted, uh, I found on Google 609,000 articles uh, recommending green smoothies as a, a health benefit. So uh, this was a very interesting article that had just recently uh, come out that uh, we found in the, the title is Ditch the Healthy Berries to Beat Muscle Pain, the eating plan that cured me of my aches and pains, which were fibromyalgia. And this is by a, a general practitioner in the UK who was, was, uh, had severe uh, fibromyalgia and, and uh, was not having any very good uh, luck and you know and and uh, and she was eating all these foods that were supposed to be uh, healthy and by the way at, at the bottom is the the URL if you want to get a copy of the article and by the way the the uh, webinar will be sh uh, shortly after broadcast will be archived and you can you can go back and look at it again if you want to get additional information. Um, you can go to the website and get the uh, this particular webinar. So, um, so uh, this uh, general practitioner had had severe fibromyalgia while eating supposedly healthy foods. She cut out all these foods on the diet. She cut out her spinach salads and and uh, nuts and berries, and and uh, the symptoms disappeared. Uh, very, very fast. I mean, in fact, she says overnight. So these things can work uh, extremely fast in some cases. So all the disabling muscle pains, tingling legs, fatigue, and inability to concentrate all went. But if she ate the high oxalate foods again, the symptoms returned within a short period of time. And she says oxalates are a kind of natural plant pesticide. Uh, that is a possibility that there could be something said for that if the plant produces something so the animal doesn't eat it. If the animal eats it, the animal gets sick and maybe doesn't uh, uh, come back to try to eat it again. But a lot of people think it is just a, it's a substance that helps to give uh, shape uh, and architecture to the uh, leaves and so forth. Um, it was very interesting that there was a uh, an incident in which a uh, a mummy was found, and if you look closely, you see that the mummy looks like it may have been in extreme pain at the time of death. And they X-rayed the the mummy. This was from South America, and they found that there was the mummy had a very large oxalate stone about the size of a golf ball uh, in the uh, kidney. So uh, oxalates are the main cause of kidney stones. It's estimated about 90% of kidney stones are, are due to these oxalates. And uh, this is information that's been out there a long time, but somewhat ignored. So this is an article from the Journal of Nutrition in 1939, so uh, uh, 70, 76 years ago. So, uh, and this uh, research was done by a researcher working for the Campbell Soup Company. They were evaluating different foods as uh, su that were suitable for uh, making Campbell Soup, so they wanted to make sure uh, the foods they were recommending were healthy and weren't causing uh, health problems. And so they evaluated the, uh, uh, the oxalates uh, in in food to find out which ones might be causing problems, and and they found the uh, these particular ones that are mentioned: spinach, Swiss chard, uh, New Zealand spinach, beet tops, lamb quarter, po poke, purslane, and rhubarb. So so these are a lot of the same foods that are recommended for the green smoothies, and these have a very high oxalate content 
often considerably 10% of the dry weight. And, and they further went on if they had uh, animals on a, a diet that, that was on the low side on calcium, uh, that if they added spinach to that diet, uh, a high percentage of deaths occurred among rats fed between the age of 21 and 90 days. Reproduction was impossible. The bones were extremely low in calcium. Tooth structure is disorganized and dentine poorly calcified. Spinach not only supplies no available calcium, but renders unavailable considerable of that of the other foods. So not only um, is it uh, not so high in calcium, but any calcium that's there is, is uh, virtually all of it is bound to oxalate. And so the, the amount of oxalates in, the, um, in people, or in this case, uh, experimental animals, becomes, the oxalates become very high in the urine. So, uh, so I did the calculations and, and did fairly reliable research and found that the, the average uh, intake of oxalates in the average American diet who's, who's, uh, who's missed the green smoothie trend is about 100 milligrams, uh, and which... <clears throat> And it jumped ahead. Whoop, wait a minute. Got to back up. Okay. So the the uh, amount of the uh, the uh, green um, the the person eating the average diet only 100 milligrams, where the person eating the green smoothie with a couple cups of of uh, spinach, or the person eating a large spinach salad, might easily be getting 15,000 milligrams, which I mentioned because that is, uh, can be a lethal dose of oxalates. And, and uh, the, the oxalates were most, mostly uh, found in the early scientific uh, research and medical research were found in uh, deposits in the in the urinary tract, uh, so the you here you see the oxalates in the kidney itself, the oxalates in the uh, ureter, and oxalates in the uh, in the bladder it, itself. Uh, oxalates can be found by just a simple uh, in the kidneys can be found by X-ray. So uh, here's a big, it's called staghorn, staghorn meaning it looks like the horn of a stag or uh, deer antlers. And, and so, as I mentioned, 90% of the oxalates are, 90% are, um, uh, of kidney stones are due to oxalates. Uh, oxalates can have uh, different uh, sizes. So it's interesting that this oxalate crystal looks very much uh, like a piece of coral, which is uh, a, a calcium coral is also a calcium. I don't know. I think it's mainly calcium uh, carbonate versus calcium oxalate, but you can still see it looks very similar to a piece of coral. Uh, here's a picture of the normal kidney, and here is a uh, staghorn oxalate crystal in kidney. Uh, here's some black oxalate crystals. And, uh, and on Mercola.com, it indicates that about 15, 10 to 15 percent of adults will be diagnosed with a kidney stone in their lifetime. More people in the south get uh, kidney stones than in the north because it's hotter. The hotter climate you are, the more dehydrated you are, the more likely those um, crystals will form. So one of the things you can do to, to uh, reduce the possibility of kidney stones is to drink a lot of water. That helps to uh, solubilize them and wash them out. 
So it's a very common problem. A million Americans develop kidney stones each year. And once you've had one attack, your chance of recurrence is uh, 70 to 80 percent. Uh, my wife had a, a, a kidney stone at one time, and she said it was more painful than, uh, than childbirth. So that gives you uh, ladies in the audience something to uh, uh, compare to. A high percentage of kidney stones are oxalates. They can also form in conjunction with, with other salts in the body like uric acid. So people with gout could have combination of oxalates together with uric acid. Uh, it's common to have pain in the side and back below the ribs. And some of the people may think they have appendicitis. So it can, the pain is very intense, like in uh, appendicitis. Episodes of pain lasting 20 to 60 minutes of varying intensity. And uh, pain waves radiating from the side, going down to the lower abdomen and uh, groin. And uh, so lots of uh, significant uh, clinical symptoms. So about a year ago, I had the misfortune of, of experiencing this myself. As far as I know, I was not on any uh, foods that were high in oxalate or anything like that, but I ended up in the uh, uh, emergency room. And, uh, and it was a, a lucky thing. I think it was probably in my uh, ureter and just by massaging the area, I think I dislodged it, and and you know, and it was like the pain just stopped. It was like almost instantaneous. So I went from one of the most terrible pains I can describe, where I tried sitting, standing, running, walking, lying down, and and couldn't be comfortable. But when I massaged the area of pain, I think I dislodged it and uh, uh, and was able to go home. Uh, so oxalates can form in all the tissues in the body. So, um, so here's a, a, a slide showing oxalate crystals uh, formed in the heart. And they kind of have a black color like obsidian, if you've ever seen the obsidian, the volcanic glass. And, and this is why uh, the the oxalates cause so much pain. You can see if you have these uh, pieces of sharp crystals in your muscle tissue, um, and uh, whether it's in your heart or your skeletal muscles, when the muscles move, uh, the muscles are being essentially torn apart by these uh, crystals that are formed, and it's causing tearing and pain. So to me, fibromyalgia is simply uh, for the most part, uh, likely to be just uh, these oxalate crystals in the skeletal muscles. But in addition, they can, they can be in the heart as well. So one of the things with the oxalates in the heart is that they could cause arrhythmias, uh, so that the, uh, the nerve impulse in which the depolarization travels across the heart is disturbed because of these presence of, of these high amounts of uh, oxalate crystals. Uh, oxalates can also form in the bone. When that happens, the person can become anemic or can have a deficiency of the immune system because a lot of the white blood cells and red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow. Pe people who have uh, extremely high amount of oxalate crystals it can they can be uh, uh, the the normal cells can be displaced by these large clusters of oxalate crystals. Oxalates can also form in the brain in the blood brain barrier. So reports of improvement in cognitive function in individuals with autism, some of this could be due to the clearing of oxalate crystals in the brain and the blood-brain barrier. Uh, another uh, source of oxalate crystals are from 
fungi. So this is showing a bunch of oxalate crystals produced by the fungus aspergillus. It's one of the most uh, common uh, fungi and it's estimated that there are uh, an average of about 60 species of different fungi present in the human gastrointestinal tract. So a, a gastrointestinal overgrowth with, uh, with various fungi is also uh, a source of uh, oxalates. I remember uh, going to the old fort in, in, uh, in San Juan in Puerto Rico and there was an area of black mold and underneath the area of black mold there were long uh, stalactites. So more than likely these stalactites forming under the mold were, were crystal stalactites of oxalates produced by the, by the fungus. Uh, this shows the uh, oxalate crystals here, the whitish uh, um, structures being formed by uh, fungus on a tree and oxalate crystals can also uh, show up in the, in the skin and cause uh, black uh, hemorrhagic uh, areas. So this is showing a person with the oxalate crystals on the leg. Oxalate crystals um, <clears throat> form metal complexes and that probably is another way in which oxalates cause uh, medical harm is by the formation of these uh, crystals with different metals. So they can react with virtually every metal and you can see again that many of these crystals have very sharp edges almost like uh, a knife. Uh, there's because they're so thin and flat <clears throat> so I've been using the term oxalate a lot and so I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the different suffix suffixes that are used with different uh, organic acid. So the acid form of uh, an organic acid has the suffix uh, IC attached to it. So that's oxalic acid and the acid form is the form of the molecule that has the hydrogen atoms or protons attached to it. So um, whereas oxalate, you see uh, down here in the lower right, oxalate, the hydrogen atoms have been, have been um, lost and, and so that form of the molecule is, gets the suffix A-T-E. So this is common in all the organic acids and the terms are used interchangeably. So these forms of the molecule are, can be easily converted back and forth in the body. So again, the IC uh, indicates the acid form that has the hydrogen atoms attached. The ATE is called sometimes the uh, salt. Uh, form of the molecule in which the hydrogen atoms are missing. So at a very acid pH, the hydrogen atoms are attached. Uh, oxalic acid is considered uh, one of the strongest organic acids uh, that, that there are. And then at a, uh, when the pH reaches 1.27, uh, the oxalic acid loses one of its hydrogen atoms and it forms one that has one hydrogen atom attached. That's called the monobasic. And, and then as the pH goes higher, then the, the uh, oxalate loses its, uh, its other hydrogen atom and both hydrogen atoms are removed. And it's this form, which is sometimes called the monobase, uh, excuse me, the dibasic form that the, uh, is a very strong chelating agent. So it can bind calcium, zinc, and it can also bind toxic metals as well. So at physiologic pH, it, so the, the pH in your blood is 7.4. 7 so at that particular, uh, that particular pH, all the oxalate is in this 
uh, form that has the two negative charges that combine very readily with, um, with metal ions. And uh, again, showing the, the change and the fact that, that, uh, that uh, oxalate can bind very well to uh, divalent uh, metal ions. And the thing about this is, uh, even though it's a good chelating agent, when the oxalate uh, binds to heavy metals frequently, it, it uh, crystallizes out of solution and then it deposits in the bones and other tissues. So I'm convinced this is in the, in the, uh, in the, in the field of autism, this is why uh, toxic metals can be more toxic to a person with autism, even if they don't have extremely high values, because people with oxalate, uh, people with autism frequently have high amounts of, of uh, oxalate, which will bind heavy metals and prevent it from being removed, and so the, the uh, oxalates will deposit in the uh, tissues, virtually all the tissues in the body. And one of the ways of assessing this for the chemist is a concept called the KSP, which means the uh, solubility product, which means uh, how much of these different uh, chemical concentrations do you have to have before the, a particular substance becomes insoluble. And the KSP is an indicator of the strength of the reaction and one of the most telling uh, measures for me is that the, the, the KSP value uh, for, of oxalate reacting with mercury is extremely tiny, which means only if there's a tiny, tiny amount of mercury, it will react very strongly uh, with oxalates and then be uh, trapped inside the tissues. And the same thing is true of lead. So two of the most toxic mercuries, two of the most toxic chemicals found in our environment uh, react very strongly with, uh, uh, with oxalates. And you can see uh, here's the reaction with magnesium. And the thing to look at is this exponent here, which is five compared to um, uh, uh, lead, which is 10, and mercury, which is 13. So, um, so it is like the reaction of oxalate with mercury is like 10 billion times uh, stronger than the reaction with uh, magnesium. So if there's any heavy metals around and you have high oxalates, it'll be much more difficult uh, to get rid of them. And so heavy metals, in effect, become more toxic. Uh, and to, uh, uh, to get into some of the, the uh, medical things, the, one of the, a common problem, uh, which there is good recognition of in, in some quarters of, uh, about the role of oxalates as a condition called vulvodynia in, in, in women, unexplained vulvar pain frequently accompanied by physical di uh, disabilities, limitation of daily activities, and, and because of all the pain and everything, there's sexual dysfunction, psychologic distress, marriage problems, and the patient's pain usually has an acute onset and becomes chronic and may last for years, often described as burning or stinging or feeling of rawness or irritation. And, uh, and this is from one of the mainstream medical art, uh, articles, uh, American Academy of Family Physicians, uh, stating that the uh, two of the most common problems are the candida. Uh, and they recommend that it's treat even if it isn't detected, they still say it is uh, it is a good thing to use antifungals, even, even if cultures are negative, because there is such a intricate uh, link between these uh, uh, problems in, in uh, vulvodynia. 
and the the same problem is these oxalate crystals in the urine. Um, they they form these crystals uh, in in the reproductive tract, and 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 uh, and so this again is like having little pieces of glass in your private parts, so which doesn't feel very good, and. Um, and so they recommend a low oxalate diet and, in addition, calcium citrate. Um, and, and it's very important to know that you, you, when you look at the supplement, you have to make sure, are they saying the weight as calcium or the weight as citrate? So it's very important because the, in calcium citrate, um, probably the two-thirds of the weight is the citrate compared to the calcium. It may even be higher than that. So you have to make sure you buy a supplement that indicates the weight as calcium. And I actually would recommend uh, higher than this. I would recommend that you take this at, uh, uh, at each meal, that you take 300 milligrams of calcium citrate as the calcium. So uh, so you would need to take one with each meal. It's very important. You can't just take it all like at breakfast or something. It has to be taken with the meal, and the reason of that is to neutralize uh, any absorption of oxalates. Uh, I was very interested in, on, the, on how uh, candida can be involved because frequently I see a relationship following antifungal that the that the oxalate problem uh, dissipates and and so I was looking at a mechanism that might explain it and so one of the enzymes that's made by candida albicans the most common yeast uh, is an enzyme that breaks down uh, collagen called collagenase and and uh, collagen is is the most abundant protein in the entire body. So about 30% of all the protein in the body is collagen. So candida has produces enzymes that have the ability to break it down. So if this is if this is occurring in the intestinal wall or uh, in the reproductive tract, then uh, the a large amount of the collagen uh, in the structures. Uh, is going to be compromised. And, and, and this is the mechanism by which it will take place. So collagen is broken down to form uh, hydroxyproline, which is uh, one of the uh, amino acids, and then a series of reactions of these uh, enzymes in the body uh, break it down and convert it to glyoxylate so it starts here. It's not important to know each of these different reactions, uh, but by a series of reactions, eventually the, uh, the collagen is being converted to glyoxylate, which can then be converted to oxalate. So this, what I believe, is probably the main way in which, uh, uh, in which candida uh, increases the problem with the oxalates. A lot of people with high candida metabolites frequently um, also have high uh, oxalates. And another mechanism for that uh, is used to form oxalates is, is um, all vegetables have uh, high amounts of glycolic acid. So even if they don't have oxalates, they have high amounts of glycolic acid. Glycolic acid, that's this particular structure here, uh, can be converted by an enzyme in the body to form glyoxalate, which is then converted to oxalate. So two different mechanisms by which this can occur. And we talked about collagen in the body, but also gelatin, which would include, of course, marshmallows or the jello uh, dessert. Um, is uh, would be broken down by those uh, uh, same enzymes to form hydroxyproline and can end up uh, increasing oxalic acid or oxalates. And I want to focus right here. 
this product called glyoxylate is can 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 go three possible ways. It can go back to glycolic acid, which can then be converted back to where it started. It can be converted to oxalate. But if there's adequate amounts of B6, then the glyoxalate is converted to glycine. So this has become a very important treatment for individuals with high oxalate, and even people with the genetic disease sometimes can benefit by high doses of, uh, of vitamin uh, B6, which stimulates the, this particular uh, enzyme and so that glycine is formed instead of oxalate. So that is a, a, a standard recommendation that I make uh, probably many times a day in, in helping to um, reduce problems with uh, individuals with excess oxalate. And, and uh, I recently came across a, uh, another way in which uh, oxa the oxalate uh, pathway can, can uh, be harmful. So glyoxylic acid, the precursor of, of uh, oxalate, can also react with one of the components of the Krebs cycle, oxaloacetic acid in the Krebs cycle forming oxalomalic acid, and this is a substance that uh, where Great Plains is looking to uh, test in the near future. And oxalomalic acid is a potent Krebs cycle inhibitor. So this is another reason why people with fibromyalgia may feel tired and low energy, because uh, this precursor of oxalates reacts to form a potent Krebs cycle inhibitor. Only a tiny amount of this stuff essentially shuts down the Krebs cycle and ener energy production in the muscles. And uh, here's the uh, scientific article, control of the uh, citric acid cycle by glyoxylate, and the mechanism is because of forming this oxalomalate substance. And uh, here's the, uh, the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is the uh, main energy producing uh, mechanism in the body. Uh, about 80% of the energy from burning up uh, different food substances produced in the Krebs cycle. So if the Krebs cycle is not working right, then, then uh, energy production is impaired. And this is the particular uh, steps that are inhibited by the oxalo uh, malate and two key enzymes, aconitase and isocitrate dehydrogenase. So both of these key enzymes are inhibited by just a very small concentration of this inhibitor. Uh, this is a, I had just showed you how hydroxyproline uh, can form, uh, can be converted to uh, oxalates. So the question is, does, does this really happen? So there's animal studies that show this is a very important thing. So this shows uh, baseline mice and then mice uh, who were, were giving a diet that had 1% hydroxyproline, 1% of the weight of the diet, and you can see the amount of oxalates in the urine went up approximately six-fold, and, uh, and so that was in mice and rats, the same thing. Uh, baseline, a very small amount of oxalate produced, but after supplementing with hydroxyproline, the same substance that's produced when candida breaks down uh, collagen to uh, form hydroxyproline, there's a marked uh, increase in uh, oxalate. So in addition to the high oxalate food, it's very important to control um, uh, gelatin, uh, jello, and uh, marshmallows, which were sources of hydroxyproline that can cause elevated oxalates as well. So 
So candida can have uh, effects in increasing oxalates by breaking down collagen. Uh, but in addition, it's felt that there is also an immune component. So, so even, in, and that may be one of the, in some illnesses, I think that it doesn't take huge amounts of candida to cause problems, and some of it's due to the fact that the person has a severe uh, immune reaction to candida. And those individuals, then the, the, um, even the person who develops a small amount of candida can have a severe reaction due to the uh, immune uh, reaction which causes inflammation. So the uh, low oxalate diet treating vulvodynia and the, the probably the irritation in disease is directly due to the oxalate crystals and, uh, and so the B6, the low oxalate diet and uh, restriction of uh, gelatin and uh, candida treatment can all be helpful. So what was surprising to me was the fact that, that the, the number of illnesses keeps expanding. And so uh, it's been found that candida can cause, excuse me, I guess candida could, but in this case uh, oxalates uh, were found in atherosclerotic lesions in the coronary arteries. And this shows the, the picture. This is the uh, cross-section of the artery where there's the atherosclerosis is occluding almost the uh, entire uh, artery. And then close up of this, um, these oxalate crystals at the end of the arrow, you can see them better when a fluorescent dye, they, this um, light colored material is all oxalate deposits. And in uh, four, four different patients, they were seeing extensive calcium oxalate crystals in the, atherosclerot in the atherosclerotic plaques. And what was surprising is that these patients, none of the patients had oxalates in the kidney, which goes to show that, that uh, the kidney stones are only the tip of the medical um, the, the medical iceberg as far as uh, toxicity. So in these individuals who had the atherosclerotic plaques containing oxalates, there were similar deposits in the thyroid gland, the lymph nodes, the heart, the testes, ouch, but not, but not in the kidneys. So uh, none of the patients had renal failure and, and they had not been described before. But this author thinks the reason they haven't been described is because nobody looked for them. And what I suspect, if people look for them, it may be found that the oxalate problem is a much more uh, common cause of problems with atherosclerosis than the cholesterol issue is. And the, the uh, types of of uh, staining that are done by pathologists to look at atherosclerotic plaques would have missed these oxalates because they have properties such that they would be invisible unless you use uh, a technique called using a polarized microscopy. And, and, uh, and so these oxalates would not normally show up in normal staining uh, procedures. Uh, also, uh, another article indicates that, that this is probably not just coincidental that these oxalate crystals are in there, that the oxalate crystals are having a role in causing the atherosclerosis. And what <coughs> this article indicates that the oxalate suppresses replication of the endothelial cells. The endothelial cells are the cells that line uh, the arteries. And so the oxalate is inhibiting the reproduction of these endothelial cells 
So if there's damage to these cells, the oxalate prevents the endothelial cells from replicating and repairing the damage. So we conclude that sodium oxalate acts as a uremic toxin, inhibiting endothelial cell replication and migration functions, which may be important for constitutive inhibition of atherosclerosis. In other words, the, the, um, the oxalate prevents the, the normal mechanisms that keep atherosclerosis from happening. Uh, kidney failure can result due to uh, high amounts of oxalates in the intestinal tract. And uh, stroke has been also associated with, uh, with high amounts of um, oxalate uh, crystals. So, so uh, the failure to find these things is really uh, the failure to uh, look for them. So this is showing the uh, the area at the or at the arrows, the place where the there's heavy amounts of um, oxalate crystals uh, formed. Uh, in autism, uh, this was a, a study done at Great Plains. Uh, these are children with the um, with autism and uh, normal children, so the values with uh, and autism were much, excuse me, um, much higher than uh, normal. So 84% of the individuals with autism were outside the normal range. It's highly significant. And uh, Susan Owens indicates, who's done a lot of research in the autism and the oxalate field, said a lot of um, symptoms of autism improved, including GI symptoms, the frequent urination problem, uh, but surprisingly, a lot of the improvements were with using uh, eliminating oxalates resulted in improvement in mental function, cognitive, academic, and motor skills. They also had less pain uh, in the legs, feet, urinary tract, and genitals, and there was a significant reduction in abnormal behavior and self-abuse. In uh, the uh, another disease in which there's impaired mental function called Zellweger's syndrome or cerebrohepatorenal. So cerebro brain, hepato liver, uh, renal kidney. So this syndrome has uh, these three components, and in these components, high amounts of oxalate were found in these individuals as well, and the the amount of oxalates was related to mental function. The children with the highest oxalate had the, uh, the mental function with the greatest amount of impairment. The high amounts of oxalates can be due to genetic disease. And uh, these genetic disease uh, frequently require liver and kidney transplants. And the problem is, in some of these cases, the oxalate crystal deposits are so large that even after the transplant, uh, the, the transplant fails because the oxalate crystals are so high in the body that they, they screw up the, the new transplanted uh, organ. So they can be diagnosed at, um, at uh, almost uh, almost any age, oops, going backwards here, and 80%, uh, uh, it's a very uh, daunting disease, 80% of diagnosed patients died before the age of 20, and it may be diagnosed as gout or arthritis, so undoubtedly that there are many people who have gout who have a combination illness in which they have both oxalates and um, uh, uric acid and, and arthritis, the, the same crystals can form in the uh, joints and tendons and, and are likely a major cause of arthritis as well. So a very important uh, medical uh, phenomena. 
So wear oxalates deposited virtually all the tissues in the body. So um, they, the oxalates can form in the thyroid gland. If they form in the thyroid gland, they can inhibit the function of the thyroid, resulting in damage to the thyroid cells, and so the, the person could end up being hypothyroid, not having enough thyroid hormone as a result uh, of that. And in the rat studies, if the rat, the rat studies were very good in, in showing that when the individuals were given the uh, high spinach or high oxalate uh, vegetable diet, there was severe deterioration uh, in, in, the, um, in the teeth as well. And, uh, and they can also form in the eyes. Uh, many, a substantial number of children with autism uh, poke their own eyes out. And the reason is likely to be the oxalates being deposited uh, in, <clears throat> in the eyes. And so they're not, they're not just weird children. They're children whose pain was so severe that they pulled out their eyes to um, uh, to tr an attempt to uh, alleviate the pain. So oxalates can be deposited everywhere. So the this is a the reason I'm, I'm convinced the reason why this isn't well isn't so well known is because of medical specialization. So so uh, the only people who look for oxalates are the are the um, or the urologist who are looking at the urinary tract and looking at the kidney deposits. So because they're focused on that, they, they don't look at the, the role of oxalates uh, in all the other tissues and are probably a major factor in, in, in a whole host of other diseases. So candida has been uh, detected in infected uh, bladder and together with oxalate crystals. So I think this is not a coincidence that the, uh, that the candida was there because it was breaking down the, the uh, collagen and converting the collagen uh, in the, uh, in the uh, bladder to oxalate crystals. And, and the oxalate crystals can play a role in, in people who, who, um, uh, who have sinus infections. So a study at the Mayo Clinic showed that it was something like 90-something percent of patients with, with the, um, <clears throat> with the uh, uh, nasal, nasal problems uh, were, were due to uh, different uh, fungi, and many times they may actually be a formation of these oxalate uh, crystals uh, in, in the uh, sinuses, which are causing uh, problems. So in this particular individual, treating with the antifungal for four weeks completely resolved the uh, problem. I have a a uh, friend who is a a, um, a uh, allergist and ENT in uh, Mexico City, and he sent me a slide, which <laughs> which unfortunately I misplaced. So I, I would have liked I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. Um, uh, showing a a large, very large oxalate crystal in the sinuses that he treated with antifungal, and the crystals completely. Uh, dissolved uh, after antifungal treatment. The organic acid test can pick up many of these, and I'll show you an a, a actual case um, of an individual of an individual uh, organic acid test. So the dysbiosis markers for picking up candida, and also picking up the oxalate. Uh, a correlation at Great Plains found a high correlation between the arabinose marker for candida and the oxalate. Uh, and uh, another factor that can be involved is low vitamin B6. So we, 
we've quite frequently, vitamin B6 deficiency is one of the most common uh, vitamin deficiencies. I suspect that there is some factor, perhaps this is the, 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 um, uh, the compound that is tested in, um, uh, in, in, um, in urine, and uh, the name, the name escapes me right now, but there's a compound that is, is commonly found uh, in, uh, in urine that, that is supposedly has the ability to bind vitamin B6. And so vitamin B6 is low, then there's going to be much more oxalate formed from the body's own uh, precursors. So uh, well, a big controversy is vitamin C. So this one study claimed that, that if you ingested less than 200 milligrams, excuse me, 2,000 milligrams daily of vitamin C, it did not increase your um, oxalate uh, problem. So this case is showing um, the first bar was with uh, no added vitamin C in the diet. The second bar was 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C, and actually you see the, the value was actually a little bit lower, um, showing there was no significance in this study. However, a different study was done with lower amounts of vitamin C and did find an increase in oxalate. So it's possible it could have been genetic differences, difference in methodology. In any case, this is one of the more difficult things because so many people have looked at vitamin C as a, as a, uh, a wonder nutrient. Um, I do feel that, that if you exceed 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, you definitely are, are increasing your amount of oxalate, and it's possible that this could happen at even lower. So far, I would say because the scientific evidence is uh, is uh, differs that it's very hard to uh, make a decision, but I definitely know with the using super high doses of vitamin C, you do definitely increase your uh, risk of developing um, oxalates in your in your tissues. Uh, this was a very useful study because it looked at. Uh, 45,000 men. So this was a really powerful study, and, and in this study what they found was that if the men were taking uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, vitamin C, and this was 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C or more a day, they actually had less kidney stones than men who were taking 250 milligrams. So I think that this study was is probably a more convincing study that in most people it appears that taking moderate amounts of vitamin C, meaning vitamin C in the range of 1,500 to 2,000, may not greatly increase your, uh, your risk of kidney stones. So in this case it was actually found taking the extra vitamin C reduced your uh, incidence of uh, kidney stones. And since we know that most kidney stones are oxalates, I think this study is, because of the sheer numbers, would be the uh, most convincing. Uh, the uh, vitamin C definitely can be broken down to oxalate. The, and the, the factors, two of the factors that can accelerate that are copper and iron. And this is a problem for individuals who are, who are being fed uh, parental nutrition, either through a feeding tube or, or um, IV feeding. Uh, so if you add uh, copper or iron uh, and mix it in with the vitamin C, the the copper and iron cause the vitamin C to be broken down to form oxalates. So uh, either copper or iron um, cause the, the uh, breakdown of vitamin C to dehydroscorbate, which is then 
very quickly converted to oxalate. So one of the ways to um, to control this, I'm going to talk about, I already talked about it, but I think it's important to uh, discuss again, which is that, that calcium and magnesium citrate is one of the best things you can do uh, for your health. And of course, the uh, many people are, are uh, magnesium deficient, and both of these cofactors are, are uh, very important for health and as, and as cofactors for many different biochemical reactions. But the, the, um, the reason that they're so important is because the, the calcium and magnesium uh, binds to oxalate causes them to precipitate. Uh, in the intestinal tract, and so then they're eliminated in the stool. But, but even more important, the citrate part of the citrate of the of the calcium or magnesium citrate competes with any soluble oxalate. So if if there's any oxalate that's still in solution, um, and it it will they will compete at the uh, in, at the edge of the intestinal mucosa and citrate is more readily absorbed than oxalate is. So the, this is by far the, the preferred uh, <clears throat> salt of calcium and magnesium. So if you're using supplement, you need to use calcium and magnesium citrate. And Okay, so the treatments to Lower oxalates, probiotics help because they help to control candida and uh, a number of the uh, lactobacilli have enzymes that destroy oxalates. Uh, antifungal treatment, which can be either, either over-the-counter or prescription antifungals, help to prevent the production of the collagenase that breaks down collagen converting hydroxyproline to oxalate, supplement with vitamin B6, 100 milligrams per day for an adult or 50 milligrams per day for a child, and that stimulates the enzymes that, uh, that convert glyoxylic acid uh, to oxalate, and instead the enzyme is stimulated that converts the precursor to glycine instead. Uh, recommend uh, 300 milligrams of calcium citrate, but remember this is 300 milligrams of calcium uh, with um, uh, each meal, and uh, this can be the same for adults and children. Adults and children basically have the same calcium requirement because even though kids are a lot smaller, their bones and teeth are growing a lot more, so probably from the age of about two or three up to 103, you can use this amount of uh, calcium, but children generally should get a lower amount of magnesium, so 100 milligrams of uh, the magnesium uh, citrate with each meal and probably 50 milligrams uh, of magnesium citrate uh, for the child. A low oxalate diet, uh, <clears throat> and I would recommend Complete elimination of spinach, chard, arugula, soy, kale, nuts, and berries. And when I say nuts, it's really easy. Uh, all nuts and berries. And, and, and so if it has the word berry in there, then you should, um, uh, you need to eliminate it except maybe as a garnish where you use a tiny little mount to give a little bit of uh, flavor. And another important thing, increase your water intake to flush all this stuff out. And so the question comes up about what about Popeye? What about all those years to all these kids saw this uh, Popeye eating this can of spinach and, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and being able to beat up Bluto afterwards? So unfortunately, it looks like a Popeye I really had eaten this stuff instead of these big forearms he'd have he'd probably have emaciated form forearms 
and would probably have fibromyalgia, barely be able to lift his arms up. So strongly suspicious that Popeye was on the take from the Spinach Growers Association. It's one of the more disturbing things about being in the scientific field. So here's a high oxalate food list. I think it gets pretty difficult. So you might want to start just by um, by taking the the group of foods that I indicated at the at the beginning. So you should, in my mind, probably best to just focus on the the extremely high oxalate food, not eating those in any amount, and uh, doing the antifungal, taking the supplements in the B6. If you get relief that way, you know, give it a, a few months. Uh, <clears throat> and if you get relief, then you can stick with that. If you still don't have relief, then you might want to go further and eliminate even more. <coughs> so uh, soy protein is a, the, the, one of the titles of this article by Alinda Massey was soy protein, probably not a good food for humans. And I've been involved as a an expert witness in a lawsuit of the uh, prisoners in the state of Illinois were protesting because virtually all the food they were given was soy derived and they we tested them and they all had elevated uh, <coughs> elevated oxalates and all had severe medical problems. One of the prisoners actually had oxalate stalactites uh, in his stomach from the uh, high amounts of soy protein. So they were giving them soy turkey and soy beef and and uh, soy butter and and uh, soy bread, soy rolls. So virtually everything was uh, soy derived because it's cheap and you understand, you know, the prisoners aren't your <coughs> aren't your highest priority in a time of of uh, budget constraints, but um, soy has one of the uh, highest level and spinach is a, uh, a very uh, close uh, second for the amount of oxalates. So the Great Plains Laboratory organic acid test can be very used to, useful for assessing these things, the yeast and fungal markers associated with candida as well as fungi like aspergillus also measures vitamin B6, a very common nutritional deficiency, oxalic acid. Uh, citrate is another factor. Low citrate is associated with stones, and it also measures glycolic acid. This chemical is found only in plants and can be converted to oxalate. So um, this is an interesting thing because as far as I know that nobody has uh, list of glycolic acid uh, amounts in various plants. <coughs> and here's a, uh, this shows a uh, organic acid test result on an uh, individual with um, a severe bipolar disorder and I suspect that the, the candida and the fungi are are related. Uh, you can see very high values for uh, hydroxymethylferoic, which has been uh, a metabolite found in aspergillus functions and two other uh, markers, furan dicarboxylic acid and furan carbonylglycine, as well as the candida marker. So the person had high amounts of fungi and and uh, candida markers. In addition, the person had uh, very high amounts of oxalate. What we found in the prisoner study is that that uh, severe symptoms can even can occur uh, even at just uh, just at or above the upper limit of normal. So oxalates are a really uh, big medical deal, and and so many people. I think we'll have health benefits by uh, addressing this particular problem. So to um, 
uh, summarize, thank you, and don't eat your spinach, and especially don't drink those healthy green smoothies unless you want to go down the, the road of, uh, of Popeye. And I will have um, answer some, um, uh, some typed in questions for, it's kind of late here, so say for about uh, uh, 10 minutes, I'll, I'll answer uh, written questions. And, and this, I just need to find the place. I've forgotten where it is. <laughs> where was it? Chat or questions? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, so a bunch of questions, and I'll try to get to as many as I can. Okay, uh, yes, there's lots of genetic SNPs which can affect oxalate processing in the body. Um, and uh, and uh, we're very interested, and, and uh, that's an uh, area of intense uh, research, and hope to have something soon. Uh, uh, assess the new product, apple ethyl, that has five grams of spinach extract. Um, I would say the amount of uh, oxalate is would probably be lower um, in in a product that has a very small amount. So the bigger the amount of substance, the more the more problematic it can be. For example, some of the oxalate lists say that black pepper is a a very high source of oxalates, but you know when you put pepper on, you're putting a you know tiny little amount. So so to me, you need to focus on the, on the substances that are present in high quantities. So if it's only five grams, I think it could still be problematic. Um, and uh, the, the, some quest, let's see, a question would like some references linking oxalates and kidney stones. Um, there, uh, some of those are on, the, if you go to the Great Plains website, there's a number of those references. You go to the Great Plains website and there is a, uh, an article, a newsletter that has uh, lots of references um, to the oxalate uh, problem. And I just mentioned you can go to, the, uh, go to the Townsend letter and you can click on the entire uh, article about um, about um, oxalates and what effect does cooking have on high oxalate vegetables? It's I would say that <clears throat> some of the oxalates will be solubilized by the cooking. Uh, the thing that would be most effective would be to uh, grind the the food up as small as possible into particles of the smallest size. And then and then boil them, and then and then throw away the the water. If you drink the water, of course, then then uh, you'll have as much oxalates uh, with the as you had initially. So oxalates are not destroyed by cooking. There's there's no destruction. Uh, you would have to put them into a flamethrower to uh, uh, to destroy them. So. Um, <clears throat> The, so the only advantage of cooking would be uh, if you're if you're cooking them in water, the water uh, will probably remove some of the oxalates. Um, <clears throat> should the should patients not take L-proline supplement as well? Well, uh, this would depend. So so proline might be able to convert it to hydroxyproline and could be problematic, but this depends on the individual. So all of these things depend on the individual. So the person's human uh, <clears throat> metabolism is very complex and, you know, we've, uh, we're, we're all uh, 
descendants of people who lived in a lot of different cultures and ate a lot of different food, and so there is, you know, uh, some specialization. And um, I think I think um, that some people feel that cystitis can also be uh, involved in um, uh, with oxalates. Uh, the if you if you have vulvodynia, the question is about vulvodynia. I you know I indicated the amount of calcium and magnesium uh, uh, citrate, and if you've if you've forgotten, you can uh, you can uh, <clears throat> repeat the talk once it once it's archived. But there was three the the value was 300 milligrams of calcium in calcium citrate and a hundred milligrams of magnesium in magnesium uh, citrate, and and the um, <clears throat> and so and and so uh, since you have chronic fatigue, so the chronic fatigue I think could also be due to the oxalate deposits and uh, disrupting the uh, disrupting the um, the metabolism of the Krebs cycle. Uh, uh, do you know if they are finding any relation to certain SNPs and those with oxalate problems? I'm not aware of any uh, research now, but we're very interested uh, in that. Should you avoid taking vitamin C with iron? It depends on what you want to do. Vitamin C increases iron absorption. If you don't have enough iron, you should be taking vitamin C. If you got too much iron, you should be taking less vitamin C. Um, magnesium glycate offer any protection? Yes, it offers any protection, but the best protector is the uh, calcium and magnesium uh, citrate. Uh, and uh, those lower oxalate are these recommendations for everybody? I think if if you're eating these green smoothies or uh, eating huge spinach salads every day, you're going to end up with severe medical problems. And uh, everybody I know who's ended up with kidney stones, uh, when I when I questioned them about it, they were all fans of either the green smoothies or I wanted to increase my to, I wanted to change to a better healthy diet and they started eating a large spinach salad every day and within a few months they were they were in the ER with their with their kidney stones. Uh, uh, what about all those great nutrients and yeah, well of course a lot of those nutrients aren't aren't available the the um, the um, all the calcium in spinach is, is bound up in oxalate. So it's a, it, I'd say, what about all those great nutrients? Well, a good reason to uh, uh, to take vitamins. Uh, uh, it makes no difference whether it's uh, GMO or organic. It doesn't make it any safer at all. Absolutely no difference. Organic, GMO, regular, they all have high oxalates. And um, and so, so I think that the oxalate overusage is is probably it might be the number one health problem for all human beings. And I think it probably if and and perhaps it was more severe because we evolved from from um, <clears throat> from mammals who were vegetarian but then had to change our metabolism to adjust to a more varied diet. And so there's probably some of that aspect. Uh, cooking removes oxalates? N nope. Uh, if, if you make the, if you cut the vegetables extremely small pieces, then, then it could remove some of it. But the vast majority, that's why the Campbell Soup Company wasn't putting spinach in their Campbell's soup because they knew that there'd still be 
lots of oxalates uh, in there. Um, green juice that it doesn't depend on whether what the whether the color of the juice it's it's the components that uh, go into it. Uh, oh, hey Denise, thank you for your comment. <laughs> um, so confused about gelatin. So this is a this is a, a legitimate issue. Uh, the uh, proline and hydroxyproline can be uh, useful amino acids, and especially proline, uh, and and it is needed. I mean, it's an essential amino acid. So it so it depends on wh where you're at. If you're a person who has uh, suffering from illnesses caused by oxalates, you want to eliminate these additional sources. But but um, um, but uh, if you're not, then that's a different story. So all of these things, I mean, human metabolism is extremely complicated, and and it's like a lot of people said, you know, do everything in uh, in uh, in moderation. And uh, question about the. The doctors don't know. Well, we do consultations for the physicians, and so we're happy to go over test results with the physicians. We can also uh, recommend physicians who are knowledgeable. If you call up customer service, they can refer you to a physician who's knowledgeable. So a, a person writes in that they have very high oxalates and uh, in candida and um, and and the and and here's the thing. So the big problem is veget. You know they indicate they're vegetarian. So it's going to. I mean you you need to uh, modify the diet to eat eat uh, vegetables with uh, lower amounts of, of, um, of oxalate. That's, that's what it is. I mean, it, it's difficult to be a, veg a complete vegetarian and not run into the oxalate uh, problem. Uh, but the treating the candida, so it's not just one thing. Remember, there were four things. Reduce the high oxalate foods take vitamin B6, take the calcium, magnesium, citrate, treat the candida. That's the, the uh, way to go. Um, um, green leafy vegetables, uh, lettuce isn't nearly as bad as spinach is. So lettuce would be uh, much preferable to, uh, um, <clears throat> to uh, spinach or arugula or other things. Uh, uh, bone broth, what about bone broth? Uh, there would be a, probably a, some um, collagen from the bone broth. You know, the, the collagen is there and it would be a source of hydroxyproline. With all of these things, you have to weigh the benefits of the substance versus the possible detriments. Um, and, um, um, the, probably the, the carnivorous people and I mean basically this comes down to probably the you know the paleolithic diet with you know meat fish and and um, and uh, a number of the vegetables that don't have such high amounts of uh, of uh, oxalates. Uh, um, there, there's a question about the clostridia being involved with the uh, oxalates, and I have noticed that some people who have the 
high clostridia, and it may be because of the severe uh, diarrhea and malabsorption caused by the clostridia difficile is um, an additional factor that's causing uh, that's causing problems with the oxalates. Um, some of these some of these things I don't know. Um, the question about uh, bitter greens such as dandelions, radicchio. Um, all of these things. The most important thing is you can eat all these things. All of these things. It's the portion size that uh, that really matters. So any of these things can be eaten in small portions. So if you're talking about something uh, as a nutraceutical, as an herbal support, uh, then then that's fine. Uh, there's n there's no problem with taking small amounts. The big problem are the people who decide that just one food is the only food they're going to eat, and then they're eating it in excessive amounts, like the people eating a large spinach salad with textured soy protein and walnuts every day. And that's their daily meal. That person is going to have problems um, in their kidneys, but probably all their other organs uh, as well. And I think I've uh, run out of uh, run out of questions. So thank you all for attending. And if you have any further questions, of course you can contact uh, customer service. And uh, thank you all for attending. And good night.